to the Philippians. Paul's epistle to the Philippians. And we're in Philippians, please, chapter 1. And I want just to read this morning three or four verses. And I want you to come with me to Philippians 1 and come down with me, please, to verse number 12. And let's remember, Paul, the apostle, is writing, and he's writing from prison. That's where he's writing these words from. He's in prison, imprisoned at Rome. But verse 12, he writes these words. Let's listen carefully. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. We know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. As we settle ourselves down this morning to listen to what the Lord has to say to us this morning, first of all, there is a thought that the Lord wants to provoke our minds with an unusual thought, and it will seem a confliction of thought. It will seem this morning a thought that will even argue against itself. But I believe this is a wee thought that the Lord wants to start us on this morning. I'm going to be quite honest with you this morning when, I, when the Lord put this thought in my heart this morning. I could see that it carried quite a weight of truth when the Lord revealed the reason for this thought. Now, here's, here's the wee thought, child of God, and this is what we're going to begin with. This is how the Lord wants us to start. When it seems we're getting nowhere, That could be the very time we are going places. Let me repeat that just for a moment again. When it seems we're getting nowhere, that's the very time we're going places. when it seems we are getting nowhere. For a wee moment, child of God, allow that thought to settle in your mind. Allow this morning the Holy Spirit Himself, not me, the Holy Spirit, to provoke that thought in your mind. When we seem to be getting nowhere, that's 
when we are going places. You know, child of God this morning, is, is that a little thought that's, that makes any sense? Does that thought make sense? When we seem to be getting nowhere, it's then when we are really going places. You know, when the Lord, I sat down in the study the other morning, that's the first thought the Lord gave me. And I says, what do you mean, Lord? I have to ask the Lord these things. I can't work them out. But when I brought this thought before the Lord, I could see, yes, there is something that is important that we need to see. And it's this. When it seems we are getting nowhere, the reason why we see that is because we fail to see God's hand at work. We fail to see God's hand in it. I, I wonder this morning, is there someone here this morning, and that's just exactly how you feel? That's where you see yourself. Perhaps you see yourself stuck in some situation, stuck in some place. stuck in some circumstance, and you seem to be getting nowhere, perhaps it's because you cannot see God's hand in it. You imagine Daniel being brought down to Babylon, deported down into Babylon, away from Jerusalem, away from everything that reminded him, that spoke to him of the God of Israel, brought down to Babylon, brought down there to spend 70 years in the midst of paganism, in the midst of idolatry. Where was God's hand in that one, may I ask? How can I get anywhere with God? How can I do anything for God where I am? Do you remember Joseph? When was Joseph was sold by his brethren to the Ishmaelites, and you remember how he ended up down in Egypt? You know, you often wonder, Joseph could have said to himself, but Lord, how can I do anything for the Lord? What, how can I do anything for God? here in Egypt. You remember the time when, when John the Apostle was banished to the Isle of Patmos, 24 miles west of Asia, surrounded by the Aegean Sea. And as he stood there alone, and as he looked at the rugged rocks, and the winds beating in his face, I'm sure John the Apostle wondered, how can I go places here for God? I'm telling you now, friend, Daniel wasn't too long in Babylon when he saw the hand of God there. Joseph wasn't too long in Egypt when he saw the hand of God there. John wasn't long on the Isle of Patmos, banished, when he saw the hand of God there. Maybe, child of God, you need to see the hand of God just where you are. Sometimes, listen, sometimes it's easier to blame the hand of the devil for putting you where you are, and the, and the hand of the devil had nothing to do with it. It was the hand of God that has put you into that difficult place. It's the hand of God that put you into that 
dark place perhaps. It was the hand of God that put you in amongst those difficult people. It's the hand of God that has brought that demanding problem. It wasn't the hand of the devil at all. It's the hand of God. And sometimes we fail to see the hand of God in that difficult place. Sometimes it's difficult, sorry, sometimes it's almost impossible to see the hand of God when we are in the midst of those difficult people. And sometimes it's hard to see the hand of God when we're faced with a difficult problem. You see, the eyes of flesh, they look at the place where we are. They see the people we're with. And the eyes of flesh tell us, how can I get anywhere for God here? My text this morning comes from the one who was in a difficult place among difficult people, faced with a difficult problem. He looked at it not through the eyes of flesh, but he looked at it through the eye of faith. My text, 1 Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. And this is what Paul writes. He says, 1 Thessalonians, sorry, 1 Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. That's my text this morning. We might go into verse 13 or 14. We'll see how, what way the Lord leads. As Paul was chained in a Roman prison, it didn't look good through the eyes of flesh, that is. It didn't feel good through the heart of flesh, that is. But through the eye of faith and with the heart of faith, he saw, he believed the hand of God was in it all. The things which happened unto me have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel. First of all, God wants us to see the prison that was a pulpit, the prison that was a pulpit. Here's a wee lesson the Lord wants to talk to you this morning and wants you to learn as I have to learn from time to time. Great obstacles and great opposition are often glorious opportunities in making Christ known. Let me repeat that this morning, because I believe this message is for some heart. You're in a difficult place. You're with difficult people, perhaps. Every day seems to be such a demanding problem. Can I say something to you this morning on behalf of the Lord, because the Lord has given me this message for somebody? The Lord has put you in that place. The Lord has brought you to be with them people for you to make Christ know. You may say to me, George, is that true? You better believe it's true. Because where you are today, those people who you're with 
would have no hope in hearing anything if you weren't there. Glorious opportunities often time can come through great opposition because they cannot come to you any other way. Paul's desire was to go to Rome to be a preacher. But Paul got to Rome not as a preacher, but Paul went to Rome as a prisoner. And Paul said to himself, and as he looked, and as he saw the hand of God in all of this, you know, I'm glad I'm here as a prisoner, not a preacher, because I'm reaching people who I couldn't have reached if I had come as a preacher. You see, child of God, Paul could have said to himself, if he had saw the situation through the eyes of flesh, listen, what good am I for God here? Maybe you're asking yourself that question this morning. What use am I for God on the shop floor? What use am I for God in the classroom? What use am I for God in the farmyard? What use am I for God where I am? Wonder this morning, do you feel trapped in a difficult place? I wonder this morning, do you feel trapped with difficult people? And this morning, you feel useless concerning your faith. Yes, the truth is this morning, you're the only Christian. There's no fellowship there. Maybe, maybe, and you feel alone. Maybe it's in an office. Maybe it's in a classroom. Maybe it's in a hospital ward. Maybe it's at home. You can't get out to the meeting. You'd love to be at the meetings, but you can't be at the meetings. Maybe there's somebody going to be watching this on YouTube. God has a message for you. Listen. God can use you just where you are. See, it's Spurgeon, the great preacher, has often been quoted and often been talked about, but very little is quoted or very little is talked about his wife, Susanna. Shortly after, the, sometime after they were married, in the early years of their married life, Susanna Spurgeon took seriously ill that left her an invalid. Everybody thought that Susanna Spurgeon, all that was left for her to do was encourage her husband and, and pray for her husband as he ministered for the Lord. God spoke to her one day where she was, and the Lord told her what to do. The Lord told her what to do. The Lord told Mrs. Spurgeon that there are many pastors who cannot afford many books to help them in their ministry. Mrs. Spurgeon then began to forward some of her husband's books to these pastors. And because of this, from her isolated area, where she felt isolated, where she felt alone, where she felt useless, do you know something? Mrs. Spurgeon began something that was called the Book Fund. And thousands and thousands of pastors were blessed through her ministry. Do you remember the little maid in Second Kings chapter 5? I'm sure when she looked back to the day when the Syrians come to Israel and they swept her of her feet and they carried her away far from home, 
She looked at herself and she says, Lord, what am I doing here? What use am I here? Out of all the children that were playing on the streets, Lord, why did they take me away? And yet the day came when Naaman the leper, news got to that little maid's ears that Naaman had leprosy. There was a wee girl there to tell them, would God, that my master were, knew the prophet in Israel. You know the story of Naaman the leper. You know Naaman's palace was her pulpit. And not only through her being there was Naaman cured from his leprosy, but from where she was that day, many souls have been swept into the kingdom of God because many evangelists preached in this passage and many were saved through it. And I remember being at a mission one night where Ivan Thompson preached in this passage in a sports hall, and three young people were gloriously saved. My goodness me, we wouldn't have had the story of Naaman the leper if the wee maid hadn't have been there. My goodness, have we not got the book of the Revelation this morning? Where did the Revelation come from? It came to John while he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. Listen, listen, where would we have, where would the book of Daniel be if he hadn't have been in Babylon? God has a purpose where you are. Here's a wee thought that I want you to really grasp. Oftentimes, our battles are really blessings. Our battles are really blessings. And even though this morning you are in an, a difficult place, this morning you are with difficult people, here's what God wants you to know. I want to use you where you are. I want to use you where you are. The pulpit, the prison, that was a pulpit. Now look at verse 13 because we see here the bonds that were a blessing. Look at verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Here's an important lesson, child of God. You can have your best witness for the Lord in the worst of circumstances. You can. You remember that. You can have your best witness in the worst of circumstances. And sometimes God uses painful circumstances for the purpose of furthering the gospel. The job, the office, the classroom, the school... Like Paul this morning, God has you chained to people that who need Christ. God has you chained to people who need the Lord. They might be unlikable. God wants you to share the Lord with them. You see, Paul looked at these chains, folks. He looks at the chains that shackle them. Shackle them. He says, you know what? These are not chains at all. They are channels. They're channels through which I can talk to these Roman guards. Four guards minded Paul every day. Four sevens is 28. There's 28 men Paul shared Christ with. He wouldn't have shared them if he had them anywhere else, the gospel. Where you are, that difficult place, child of God, listen to me. This is what the Lord wants you to know. It's a channel that God wants to use while you're there. You think you're going nowhere. Listen, you could be in the very places where God will take you places. One day at Craigavon Area Hospital, 
A young mother came into the ward with her wee baby, diagnosed with an incurable disease. Tracy was on duty that day, and she knew the situation. She went into the wee ward where they were, the mother and the wee baby. And Tracy said to the mother, who was devastated, I don't know how you're feeling, nor I couldn't imagine how you're feeling. But I have a friend who was in a similar circumstance. As you find yourself now, would you mind if I, she wrote a book, and would you mind if I brought that book in for you to read? Yes. I don't mind. And that book was Alison's book, K. She brought the book in. Carolyn, Carolyn began to read. And after she read the book, she says to Tracy, can I meet Alison? After that, Tracy made arrangements, but then Tracy says, George has a friend who went through the same circumstance. His name was Trevor Gillanders. Would you like his book? His book is entitled, A Little Child Shall Lead. So Tracy brought in Trevor's book, Hospital Ward. She began to read Trevor's book, and as a result, as a result of reading Alison's book and as a result of reading Trevor's book, Caroline got saved. And her husband. And her husband. You can be a channel, dear. Where you are, you can be a channel. But that story doesn't end. Carolyn wanted to meet Alison again along with Victor Maxwell. And Carolyn, since her wee baby was called home, has wrote her own book called Over the Rainbow for the sole purpose of sharing her experience through dark times. It all began with Tracy giving her a book, Alison's book, Kay. That desk in the classroom may seem a chain. See it as a channel. That shop floor may seem a prison. See it as a pulpit. Because where you are, you're the channel God wants to move through and to speak to others for the sake of the gospel. That difficult place could be the very place where the gospel can be further, where it can't be furthered anywhere else. Listen to the text, the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Thirdly, and I'm finished, verse 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. <clears throat> Did you notice the prison that was a pulpit? Did you notice here now the bonds, the chain, the bonds that were a blessing? But look at verse 14. You've got the experience that was 
the encouragement. Because of where Paul was, not only was other, were others hearing the gospel, but those who were sharing the gospel were strengthened and encouraged through his experience. Paul's difficult circumstance deepened the courage of others who spoke of Christ. Listen. If Paul and Silas were never in the stocks with their backs lashed open, you never would have had the text, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? If Paul and Silas had never been locked up in the stocks with their backs lashed red, raw, and open, and in terrible place, you never would have had the text, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You never would have had that text. Those two texts of Paul and Silas hadn't have been in the stocks. Oh, no, friends. Will you brighten the corner where you are? Our sister Yvonne gave me a CD last Lord's Day of Mary McKee and the Genesis. Track one, CD three. There's a song entitled, Heaven Holds the Answers. That time will never tell. You know where you find yourself this morning, who you find yourself with this morning. Listen, you can try your best and work it out in your head. God knows the answer. You leave the answer with God, and you be that channel of blessing where you are. I'm going to finish with another lovely little illustration to bring the message to a close. One of the great Bible commentators is a man by the name of Warren Wersbury. Warren Wersbury was being treated in hospital after a very serious road accident. As he was in hospital, he began to receive letters from someone to encourage him. Wersby said each letter got better as they came. After a long spell in hospital, he longed to meet this person who wrote to him. The meeting place was arranged. But Warren Wearsby got an awful shock. The person who wrote to him was blind. The person who encouraged him was a diabetic. The person who wrote to him had a leg amputated. The, le the person who wrote to him was bound to a wheelchair. And where this man was, his wheelchair was his pulpit. And writing letters was the channel through which he encouraged God's servant. That day when Warren Wearsbury met this man, he said to himself, this person who has encouraged me has made me more determined to live for God and to make Christ known. Listen, child of God, every one of us face battles, and I'll tell you, maybe nobody, nobody faces them more than what I do. But often the times your battles are really blessings. Your chains are often channels through which you can make Christ know. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, Paul writes in the very same letter. And no matter where we are, child of God, or where life finds us, or where God has us, you remember this. We're there to be a channel to make Christ known. 
the things which has happened unto me, said Paul, have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel, not for the finish of it, for the furtherness of the gospel. And may we see our battles as blessings. And may we see the chains that seems to shackle us as channels to make Christ known. May God bless His Word to our hearts and souls this morning. God bless you. We're going to sing our closing hymn. It's number 700, please, and 81 in the Red Hymn Book, 781. How I praise Thee, precious Saviour, that thy love let hold of me. Thou hast saved and cleansed and filled me, that I, thy, that I might thy channel be. 7, 8, 1, and let us rise to sing, please. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5 as the time has gone. 1, 3, and... No, sorry, 1, 2, and 5. 1, 2, and 5. And remain standing for the closing prayer. Thank you. <laughs>